hi welcome students to my third session on green function let us go to the first slide as we have already studied the definition of green's function today let us study the properties of one dimensional green's function as we know green's function is a special technique to solve inhomogeneous partial differential equations with some boundary conditions okay as we know that the definition of the green function the basic property says an operator l operates on a green function g will produce the dirac delta function delta x minus t the dirac delta function is one only at x equal to t and all other points of x it ceases now let us consider the storm lovely operator sl operator which is given by d by dx px d by dx gx plus qx dx is equal to delta x minus t now if you expand this next coming to the next slide i am using this uh, equation that is the storm lovely equation and integrating on both sides of this equation for a small interval from t minus epsilon to t plus epsilon so that becomes integral t minus epsilon to t plus epsilon d by dx px d by dx of gx plus integral qx gx e equal to integral delta dx epsilon is a small quantity hence rhs is 1 taking the second part as 0 so the right hand side is 1 because epsilon is a very small quantity that means if you uh, as we know delta is uh, 1 at x equal to uh, t since epsilon is very small so that means x is very close to t and you can approximately taken delta as 1 so the right hand side of this equation is 1 and in the left hand side the second part uh, is taken as 0 because as we know that again the concept the I mean, the limit tends to 0 the second part is nothing but the all the the value will become because the same value you have to subtract it and that will become zero this first part is undergoing integration by parts and that will give you p of t plus epsilon dg by dx plus um, uh, minus p of t minus epsilon dg by dx t minus epsilon that is equal to 1 so we are uh, rem we have the equation final form of this uh, equation is p of t plus epsilon which is the upper limit substituted the upper limit and uh, because of the integration and the differentiation will cancel out so the integral and d by dx will cancel out so the remaining is p into d by dx of g so p of t plus epsilon d by dx I mean dg by dx at uh, x plus uh, I mean as t plus epsilon minus of p into t minus epsilon dg by dx at t minus epsilon that is equal to 1 now when we put the limit epsilon tends to 0 coming to the next slide p can be taken outside p of p into dg by dx at t plus epsilon minus dg by dx at t minus epsilon equal to 1 dg by dx minus dg by dx is equal to 1 by pt and dg2 by dx minus dg1 by dx is equal to 1 by p of t this property shows that the values of green's function must be different for x less than and that great less than t and x greater than t so since of the right hand side is non zero the left hand side is also non zero that means uh, the first derivative of green's function at the two points two nearby close points are not equal so that means they are different uh, so let us say g1 is the green's function at the point x minus epsilon i mean t minus epsilon and g2 is the green's function at t plus epsilon so now that will become g2 of x into t plus epsilon minus 
g1 of x into t minus epsilon is equal to 0 that is from the second integral is 0 that means the Green's function is continuous across the boundary that means g2 of x into t plus epsilon is equal to g1 of x t minus epsilon. Coming to the next slide the as we have seen that the derivative of the Green's function at the two nearby points are not equal uh, are not equal that means the derivative is not continuous whereas the Green's function is continuous. So these are the two properties of the Green's function. Once again we can say that the Green function is continuous across the boundary and the derivative of the Green's function is not continuous but differs by dg by dx at a t minus I mean t plus epsilon minus dg by t minus epsilon is equal to 1 by pfx. Now the forms of Green's function can be under analyzed in this section. Let us find g1 and dg2. Now we assume the Green's function g1 is equal to c1 u1 x where c1 and c2 are the functions of t to be determined. The Green's function are determined using the two properties we got. The first one is the Green function is continuous c2 u2 of t minus c1 u1 of t is equal to 0 as uh, we have put the value as the boundary that means since uh, g1 put, put the value of g1 as c1 u1 and g2 as c2 u2. So g1 minus g2 is equal to 0 that means c2 u2 minus G c1 u1 equal to 0. Accordingly the second condition is the derivative of Green's function is discontinuous that is dg by dx at a x plus t plus epsilon minus dg by dx at a t minus epsilon is 1 by p of t. And then I go, we got the two second equation. Let us uh, substitute the value of uh, g1 of g2 as c2 u2. So that becomes c2 u2 dash t because u2 dash is the du2 by dx. So the first derivative of u, so that will become c2 u2 dash t minus c1 u1 dash t is equal to 1 by p of t. And uh, that is the second equation. We multiply the first equation by u2 dash and the second equation by u2. So that will become c2 u2 t minus c1 u1 t is equal to 0 was the first equation that will become multiplying by u2 dash on both sides c2 u2 dash into u2 minus c1 u1 into u2 dash is equal to 0 and multiply the second equation by u2 that will become already it has c2 u2 dash and now when you multiply by u2 it will become c2 u2 dash u2 minus c1 u1 dash u2 equal to minus 1 by uh, p of t into u2. There was a minus 1 by p of t in the second equation and then we subtract this new two equations. Uh, the equations 3 and 4 are being subtracted and that will become c1 u1 dash u2 minus c1 u2 dash u1 equal to u2 by pt. So equation 3 minus 4 will give you this equation. So now we take the c1 is common c2 is uh, c2 is uh, cancelled. So c1 into u2 u1 dash minus u1 u2 dash equal to u2 by p. From here we got the values of c1 c2 and g1 g2. So I am considering u1 u2 dash minus u2 u1 dash as w as a new function it is called Ron Sicken. The accordingly c1 will become u2 by w into p of t and c2 is equal to u1 by w p t. Accordingly g1 is nothing but c1 into u1. So therefore c1 is as we know c1 is u2 by w p therefore g1 is u1 into u2 by w p. Similarly g2 is c2 u2 but c2 is u1 by wp therefore g2 is u2 u1 by wp 
so therefore the solution y of x in terms of green's function the two forms of green's function is y of x is equal to integral let us have the limits a to t g1 xt f of t plus g2 f xt f of t now let us assume some conditions case 1 finite initial and finally boundary values are given now if I have a, a differential equation and the boundary conditions are given we can use the Green's function method to solve this equation let us have the Green's function for the operator d square by dx square with the boundary conditions y of 0 is 0 and y of 1 is equal to 0 so for the homogeneous equation d square y by dx square is equal to 0 next slide so that means dy by dx is a constant if I integrate it you will get y equal to ax plus b and as the boundary condition says that y of 0 is 0 which means we put in this y equal to x plus b that will become 0 equal to a into 0 plus b that means 0 uh, that means b is equal to 0 so as we know that g1 is equal to u1 into x that means the u1 here will become a x that means we have b is equal to 0 the expression for in the expression for y the second term is 0 therefore we have only the a is non zero therefore the remaining is a so that is what u1 is equal to c1 into t that means u1 is a t so c instead of c1 a comes if i differentiate u1 with respect to t that will become just a so a t if i differentiate will become a so u1 dash is a from the second boundary condition y1 is 0 so put again y is equal to 0 and x equal to 1 in this equation y equal to x plus b so that will become 0 equal to a plus b that means b is equal to minus a so u2 comes to the second uh, corresponding to the second boundary condition u2 is nothing but ax minus a because the function y is represented as ax minus a because b is equal to minus a so accordingly u2 of t also will become a t minus a u2 dash x will become a therefore we can start the round second w is equal to u1 u2 dash minus u1 dash u2 so that is nothing but substitute the values of u1 and u2 dash and u1 dash and u2 will get a square so g1 is defined for below x less than t g1 is u1 u2 by round second w so that means u1 u2 by a therefore uh, what we get is x into t minus 1